Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Rob's Hot Mic. Uh, here's a little interesting tidbit for you before we get started. Uh, did you know that 97% of the Japanese population is made up of ethnic Japanese? Um, and I did say the Japanese population, didn't I? If I didn't, my bad. Uh, anyway, uh, made up of ethnic Japanese. Uh, and of course, there's ethnicities within that rather large grouping, but native to the Japanese islands, uh, with, where young foreigners may be 10% of young workers in Tokyo, sort of a set of a set. Um, Mary Elizabeth Winstead is five foot eight, which is an inch taller than the average man in Japan. Uh, so I'm thinking... That makes for one awesome cover for an assassin, don't you think? Anyway, let's watch this crazy trailer. Jesus, Kate, what happened to you? I missed. I think I was poisoned before the hit. V, who was the target? Grand honcho of the Yakuza. How much time do I have? 14 hours, maybe 15. <laughs> Kate, it's gonna be okay. You won't get any more questions from me after today. Who are you? She would be Kate, the eponymous Kate which this film this is what we're here to talk about uh it's uh this is a kind of pre pre-release little uh spoiler free review for your folks uh yeah the it's coming out on netflix tomorrow but i was fortunate enough to uh get a screener from uh from netflix and so i've got a like i said a spoiler re re spoiler free review that's what i'm trying to say Anyway, uh, here, where are we here? Okay, so here's, let's set this movie up. The log line from Netflix is, after she's poisoned, a ruthless criminal operative has less than 24 hours to exact revenge on her enemies and in the process forms an unexpected bond with the daughter of one of her past victims. Uh, it's directed by French director Cedric Nicolas Troyan, and I believe I'm pronouncing his last name correctly. It's written by Umar, Umer Alim. Uh, interesting note regarding the script, folks, is it's actually a, it was a blacklist script, a blacklist script uh, that bounced around for a while and then was picked up and developed and turned into a movie. For those of you who don't know what The Blacklist is, we're not talking about the 50s Blacklist or how it's sometimes generally referred to. Hey, you've been blacklisted. He's on a blacklist. That book's on a blacklist. This is actually, it started as an informal group of readers, Hollywood readers, and that's what they would do. They'd read scripts. And it was the scripts they really liked that seemed to be on a blacklist because they weren't getting made. And it's developed into an actual official thing, So, which I think is super cool. Um, back to the film, though. Uh, so starring Mary Elizabeth Winstead as the eponymous Kate, uh, Tadanobu Asano as Renji, Miyavi as Yojima, Mike, <laughs> a blink and you'll miss it, Michael Heisman uh, or Michelle Heisman as Steven, and uh, with Jun Kunamara as Kojima, and Woody Har Harrelson as Varric, uh, and a introducing Miko Martineau as the young woman Annie. Uh, set this up properly. Uh, the woman, uh, the movie opens with Winstead's Kate on a job that goes a little sideways, and she starts questioning her future as an assassin. <laughs> Up to the point, I guess it's gone well. A anyway, we learn she's been raised from a young age by Woody Harrelson's character Varric uh, to be one. Uh, now, before too long, Kate's on another job and her tummy starts to act up at the exact wrong time. Needless to say, 
she doesn't complete the miss mission and after a pretty cool yet comically unbelievable chase scene finds herself in the hospital where she learns she's been poisoned and has you know as you saw in the trailer 14 15 maybe hours to live no cure of course she spends the rest of the film trying to find out who gave the order all the while building that aforementioned bond with the teenaged girl uh annie who's the daughter uh not just of a previous victim but of uh, the victim at the very beginning of the movie <laughs> so you can see how this might all blow up in people's faces anyway folks once I once I got over the ridiculousness of the premise, you know, I had a great time. It the action was solid. The you felt the pace, uh, the, the pace was maintained. It knew when to breathe. You 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 got into the characters, especially uh, especially Kate and Annie. Uh, Winstead was really able, like, I mean, not only did I buy her as an assassin, but I bought her as she's slowly dying. Um, I bought the, there's a tragic element to this, because of course, yeah, she she really is going to die. Like, I mean, that's, I'm, I'm not spoiling you anything for you folks. It's literally in the trailer. Um, the, there is a mystery here. Like, I mean, it, it you know, when you first walk, when you first First blush, it's action gangsters, but there is a mystery. And uh, oh, like my man, <laughs> Mr. Blake, uh, Mr. Blake Snyder uh, in Save the Cat says, all mysteries really are not so much about the who, but the why. And the mystery was engaging enough in this film to, to keep your interest. So all things, things going on made for made for a really pleasant, it wasn't even two hours. It was a good time. Um, now to go a little deeper into this flick, I, you know, it, it is a, a, it's got style. It's got a ton of style, but of course you may be thinking that this reminds you a lot of some summer predecessors, streaming predecessors like Jolt and Gunpowder, Gunpowder Milkshake. This one's a lot more grounded in reality. Uh, it reminds me most of John Wick with a bit of Blade Runner and some Luc Besson. And I'm thinking Leon the Professional and La Femme Nikita here. There's also a bit of a hint of Gross Point Blank. And if you guys haven't seen that movie, just yeah, change that. Dig it up. I'm pretty sure you can find it on Prime. Uh, maybe even Netflix. I'm not sure. But check that out, starring John Cusack. At one of his, a film he made himself. Uh, fantastic, fantastic uh, assassin movie. All right. Um, back to this one, though. There's more than a couple of fight scenes, great fight scenes. But there's one in this brightly lit club that... I just cut it off in the trailer. Don't want to give, even the trailer might give you too much. This club with the uh, Japanese walls, black and white. It is, I, I thought it was super cool. I think that's a, a fight scene you're going to remember for a long time. Um, I, I, I mentioned it before, the pace is maintained. The film, the filmmaker knows when to lay off the gas, let it breathe a bit. You know, just as Kate's catching her breath, we're allowed to catch her breath. But never, like, totally letting their foot off the gas. Like, uh, you know, it's, it's pulling back, coasting for a bit, but, you know, the engine's still running. Um, another thing I noticed is uh, the director, Nicola Troyan, has no problem picking a cool shot that serves the vibe and the style of the flick if story sense be damned uh in particular one and you'll recognize it once you watch it assuming you watch it uh katie kate has a look in this car <laughs> she's looking out which is just mm, chef's kiss and again like also like again it doesn't serve the serve the story it's part of that same comical car chase scene i talked about which is also cool 
anyway um as far as the performances go let's say you know what woody was fine um not i'm not saying he phoned it in or anything but you've seen him in this role before so it's not like you're going wow this is a whole new or geez i'm really riveted by his by his presence or anything he he gives a solid performance but that's about it the uh i'll, I'll talk about the the japanese uh actors the uh, in a second um what i do want to talk about is the newcomer uh go back to her name again my apologies ah yes miku martino here's a fun fact the young woman's canadian she is actually born and raised in toronto uh, or at least raised in Toronto. And I swear to you, I think I can hear that accent. It's like, what is that, Scarborough? <laughs> um, anyway, uh, she was, she delivered, she was awesome in this. And it'll be interesting to see if, you know, how much further she goes, uh, whether or not she wants, uh, you know, if, if she wants to, how much further she can go she delivered here it was really fun you really felt you felt the team you know without her being too irritating on one side too worldly on another it just felt like a really honest performance and just struck the right note and yeah fantastic uh that kind of leaves uh oh yeah <laughs> winstead winston Winstead fucking delivered here. I was super impressed. I again, I, I said it before. I'll say it again. She totally delivered as uh, as an action star. She delivered a you know as much nuance as you can have in a movie like this. There's poignancy. She brings a, a certain amount of pathos to it. Um, yeah, it. Yeah, I, I want to see her. I really want to see her in more of these kind of roles. I just, it was, it was fantastic. A real highlight of the flick. Now, um, I want to talk about uh, the unintended comedy and then we'll get back to the, the bad guys here. Um, yeah, there's this car chase, which <laughs> kind of shows it's, it's, it's unbelievable on man, many levels, right from the choice of the car and you'll know what I mean if you see it, right? But right from the choice of the car <laughs> to the way it all played out. Uh, but here you can really see the director, uh, the director, Nikola Troyan. He's got a VFX background. He was actually, let me pull this up. Yeah, he was the visual, he was a visual effects artist on Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men's Chest. The Weatherman, he was the lead 2D visual effects artist. Uh, Solstice. He was the visual effects supervisor. Snow White and the Huntsman uh, is, was visual effects supervisor and second unit director. And there he was nominated for an Academy Award for Best, best Visual Effects. He was second unit director in Maleficent, uh, The Huntsman, Winter's War. But you could see, especially in this movie, that VFX background. Uh, so not just in this kind of set piece car chase nonsense but in some of the uh in some of the more obvious fight uh detritus the blood spurt the it, it can get pretty pretty graphic and pretty gory um and i'm sure there's other aspects that we don't even see that we don't notice we don't know the vfx are there uh but that kind of goes to the style of the movie that kind of blade runner aesthetic i think they were they they did a pretty good job while still making sure it was a tokyo you could imagine visiting you know um what else uh oh yeah let's now get to the bad guy and the well but you know what? We got to talk about the way we look at Japan, the way we look at Tokyo, the way we look at Japanese criminals. Of course, the the big bad here, or the part of she's in a conflict with two elements in a way, or maybe three or four elements of the Yakuza. And that's such a... It's becoming a... Or is already... 
I'm just getting tired of it. I'm getting tired of the of Japan being presented in these movies. Like there's just this dark underworld. We only ever see Japan at night. Uh, we only en- ever see it under neon. And these this Yakuza, these guys never actually seem to commit crime. They're mostly kind of forever in battles with each other, you know, but uh, you never actually see them, you know, just, no, no, I, I got to, we're running a numbers racket here. We're going to go knock off that bank there or, you know, like some kind of thing. But it's, it's uh, almost a hearkening back to like the shogunate <laughs> and they're just medieval uh, daimyo. Anyway, uh, the other, th- uh, so and even though, yes, the girl is Japanese, she's got a North American accent, which is your kind of your cue that she is she's more like uh let's say culturally white. Um and I, I just think it's it's a little problematic. It's not it's not a film killer at all. I don't think it's like, oh my goodness, this is terrible racism. I just think it's it's something worth noting. It's something It's something I think important to talk about. Um, last but certainly not least, and, and again on the same theme, and, and then I'll, I swear to God, I'll let it go. Uh, there's a moment where kind of uh, Japanese, because she the character is half white, half Japanese, half North American, half Japanese. Um, there's that sort of, she talks about the racism of Japan and especially the Yakuza. And I'm not saying Japan does not have a problem with racism. What I am saying is it's a little bit of, well, what about them? (laughs) And coming from like a a film made by Westerners set in the set in Japan, it's like, ooh, not a good look, (laughs) not a good look. Just putting it in her mouth, still doesn't really you know it's a little ooh, yikes <laughs> anyway that that's that's it that's all I'll speak of it let's get back to this thing as an action film uh to to summarize uh yeah i it it was notwithstanding these these problems <laughs> uh it was a lot of fun uh i i kind of like this genre and it delivered those genre expectations it, Winstead was a great star. Uh, I, can't, I can't speak well enough of her and of uh, and of Ms. Uh, I've, I've only said it. Ms. Martineau. Um, how Canadian? Martineau. <laughs> it's just Miku Martineau. <laughs> it's like, oh, Toronto um, or Montreal. Uh, anyway, it was a great time. I do think it is worth your time. It's coming out on Netflix tomorrow at premieres or well, 2 a.m. here in Central Daylight Time uh, Friday to like in hours uh, here in Canada. Uh, but that's I believe it's a worldwide thing, uh, uh, definitely in the United States. So, yeah, I think it's worth your time. Um, what else do I want to add on that? One more thing. Sunday. A couple of things about Sunday. Sunday is actually, we're going to be looking at, we're going to take a deep dive on this film. So if you do see this, if you watch it this weekend, drop by the channel at 8.30 Central Daylight Time. We're starting an hour early, uh, 8.30 Central Daylight Time on uh, on Sunday. Uh, what would that be? 10, 11, 12, the 12th, <laughs> September 12th, 8.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Uh, We've got a guest, a special guest host, a friend of mine from who is on the eastern east. It lives in eastern Canada. So we pulled it back to accommodate uh, accommodate her. Really excited about having her on the show. And uh, what else? Hey, uh, if you don't show up Sunday, feel free to uh, feel free to comment below. And oh, I can't believe I've waited too long for this. Please don't hesitate to click like (laughs) subscribe. And ringy ding that bell. <laughs> uh, oh, geez. I just keep forgetting everything, don't I? It's social nutrition checklist. <laughs> uh, here's the short version. It doesn't earn a reframe stamp. It is union made. The Bechtel test, yes, it does pass. 
And uh, is it class conscious? In no way is it. <laughs> uh, so now, now we truly are done. Thank you all very much uh, for checking out my video and uh, have a have a have a great evening. Bye bye.